Look who's here, ladies and gentlemen. Maria Menounos has arrived. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm I'm great. I know that you're in town. Technically, you're still in town from WrestleMania. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. How great was it? That was amazing. I, it's so fun that like you know because I'll see you do the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and then you'll be doing. You did the watch along uh, this time with them, right? Yeah, that was so much fun with Pat McAfee. Yeah, but I mean, hello, me and the Big Show. Yeah. Yeah, me Although, and the Big Show were good together. We had a lot of fun. I heard the Big Show went on and immediately announced that they had switched one of the matches to go first. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well yeah, it was supposedly, AJ Styles was supposed to be first, I think. Uh -huh. And that's who I thought I was doing the watch along for. Right. And so, yeah. And then Big Show was just like, oh, yeah, they switched this. Yeah. And it was like, wow. Little too inside info there. Right, exactly. right. But then you end up spending most of the show... Out on the floor, like always. Yes. And just uh, getting yelled at by fans. I've gotten a few tweets from people that were upset. I was standing up and I just want to let everybody know who's listening that uh -huh. I am very apologetic. And I turned around and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I thought that they were taunting me. Uh -huh. And though I think they thought I was taunting them and being like bitchy. And I was like, no, 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 I'm genuinely sorry. I was too excited. I wasn't like paying attention. Yeah. And so they're like, next time, sit down, Menounos. <laughs> so then I was kind of like glued to my seat for the rest of the night. Like, and then I would do that, like, Hover, but then it, what it really does is it makes it look like you're sticking your butt out at everybody. Right. No, I've I, I've seen you at these shows. You get <laughs> extremely enthusiastic. Yes. Like to the point. I mean, you're in your own world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you yeah, don't I even can't know myself. Right. Right. Did you have a favorite moment? I mean, obviously the women's match. I got really emotional, and there was a, a woman behind me who was getting really emotional. And so the two of us were like starting to tear up because it's been such, you know, such a journey for the women's division. And to see them out there, uh, main eventing was so cool. And of course, to see Becky win was amazing. Yeah. And we've become friends. And so I was super psyched about that. And of course, Shane McMahon always, like I saw him backstage, and I go, Shane, do you always have to almost like, like, kill yourself like do we always have to be in fear for your life yeah it's one of those things where <laughs> you think that if you were in like this high danger situation and you survived it you're like i'm never doing that again yeah but he's like well i survived it i'm just gonna keep doing that over and over again i know there were a lot of like injuries this time around too like i heard Miz got his head stapled and mm -hmm. i saw shane with a huge black guy and ronda broke her hand and yeah everybody showed up a lot of bloody elbows i saw front row although you almost ended up with bloody elbows. I was at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, there we go. There you we know, go. I'm sitting there and I'm there with Jess mm -hmm. and I watched this guy jump out of the crowd. He's wearing like a Rastafarian hat and he grabbed Bret Hart. And it, you know how wrestling is. It's one of those things where for a second you have to go, is this a bit? Yeah, you don't know. But real quick, it was like, oh my God, this isn't a bit. And the guy tackles Bret Hart and immediately Rhonda's husband, <sighs> Travis, jumped on stage and Speared a bunch. Him. Right. And a bunch of the wrestlers jumped on stage. And I'm like, this is the last place in the world that you want to do that. Yeah. And I look up <laughs> and center of the ring. I'm like, how did Kevin Undergaro get in the ring with him? And oh, there yeah. he is officiating the whole thing, <laughs> like making sure that everybody's in the position that they should be in. Yeah. Did you just turn around? And see that your husband had fled and... and Well, I think you missed a little bit of this. So yeah. I examined this like the Kennedy assassination, <laughs> okay? I had to like three in the morning I was the studying Zapruder Tate. film. So basically, you know, I see this guy chasing in after Brett. And again, I didn't understand. And uh, Travis, uh, Ronda Rousey's husband, literally, if you watch the videos, he spears him as this dumbass spears uh, Brett. Mm-hmm. And Natty's instincts were brilliant because she saw him coming. She protected Brett, went down with him. And so soon I, I grabbed my phone. I started Instagramming. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then Kevin's gone. And so <laughs> Kevin climbs into the ring, lifts Brett up, uh -huh. pushes him over to the side. Uh -huh. Then he realizes, oh, we got to get this guy out of here. And he's like, Maria, I just kept hearing this. I mean, you could see. And this guy was super dumb. And so Kevin jumps out of the stage to pull him out with Shane and, of course, everybody else. So I run over to Stephanie. I'm like, Stephanie, this is real, right? Like, I, because I'm so, like, scared to, like, screw something up. And she goes, it's real. Stay out of it. Like, stay back here. And then I see Kevin in the middle. I'm like, no way. So I start <laughs> running like a psycho. I pull Kevin out. And he's like, you get out. I go, no, you get out. And then I run back <laughs> in because I wanted to murder this man myself so, i was so mad i'm like you you hurt my friends so kevin is trying to like 
ease the tension somewhat and you're like, no, I'm getting in there. Yeah. I'm getting in yeah. there. I'm throwing so one at pissed. him. Boston just totally happened. It just came out and it was funny because people were tweeting. They're like, the long haired female attacker was Marie. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I thought I was going to do amongst seven foot tall, 400 pound giants, but I was going to just felt it. Yeah. You felt the rage build up. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You don't go in and be that disrespectful and to like dangerous. To a cancer dangerous. survivor and someone who had ju- gone through a stroke and to Natty, you just don't do that. And a room full of wrestlers is probably the wrong crowd to do it. Yeah. In, and they're know? our family. So, yeah. So, no, not happening. Yeah. So, Maria, let's talk about- <laughs> So, from that to- <laughs> Right. This is rough. A, <laughs> this is, well, I'll tell you that the same protective instincts <laughs> that you have and that Kevin has- your dog has. Yes. Right. Yes. And I know that and I know that because I've been there and I've met your dog and your dog likes me. It's a giant German Maximus shepherd. Maximus likes you. Maximus likes me. Oh, good. Yes. We walked around the house. But the vibe that I was getting from him. Is at any moment. Cause, yeah. Because he needed pets the whole time. The entire time. Yeah. I needed to be petting him and being uh-huh. nice. And I saw his eyes the whole time. And he would just be looking up at me like, try something. Yeah. Just try something. And yeah. I'm like, no, no, we're petting. <laughs> we're still good. And even if I stop petting. I knew that that wasn't an option either. Don't worry. You saw my husband. He's a hero. He jumps right into the action. He would save you. Right. But Um, we were on good terms and we stayed on good terms and it was great. But you you guys have been dog people forever, mm -hmm. as long as I've known you, certainly, and and years and years and years before that. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're involved with the Beverly Hills dog show is not not a shock. It seems very fitting. Yes. It's my third year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember when I was working at E, they asked me to do it. And I was like, uh, so I get to hang out with dogs all day? Yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. I'd rather that than hang out with you guys. Hang out with the dog. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I didn't say that. But <laughs> anyway, um, so we I remember vividly that first year, I was so giddy getting to see all of these different breeds. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. I was a kid in a candy store and they were really kind and allowed me to gush and squish and kiss and mush and and then get around to the actual job of interviewing people. Right. So uh, so I've been doing it for three years. And yes, it's the Beverly Hills Dog Show presented by Purina. And what's cool about it is it's different from the other dog shows because we are bringing the celebrity to it. So Ashley Tisdale was there with her little dog, Maui. But my favorite was Sean White, Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. He comes in. My jaw dropped to the ground. He comes in with his little... A terrier, I think it's a Yorkie, <laughs> um, Leroy, Leroy the good boy, I think he's called, and he's uh-huh. got his own Instagram account, and they were wearing matching outfits. Oh, my God. Both in pink. <laughs> no, 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 but Sammy had pink sunglasses, oh. just like his dad. The dog was wearing pink sunglasses. Yes. No, no, Leroy no, the good boy was wearing- It's everything. Everything. You have to look it up on Instagram. It's so cute. Um, so we had the celebs. We had the dogs. It was so much fun. It's it's a family tradition. So it'll be on this Easter Sunday yes. at 1 p.m. And we also have the National Dog Show on NBC. Thank yes. you for, for that. Yes. And then we also have the National Thanksgiving, the National Dog Show on Thanksgiving Day. So you have two different holidays now with big Some time dog shows beautiful dog shows and you're not bringing maximus are you i wanted to but he wants to eat everybody that's what my thinking was <laughs> that there would be especially you're talking about sean white and his little tiny thing yeah. he's got like that maximus would eat that dog no see maximus is really good with other dogs oh he wants to eat the people he wants to eat the people i see anybody who comes near me he right. wants to eat and so i usually bring winnie with me uh, yeah that's... <laughs> winnie's my little poodle who doesn't want to eat people right yeah <laughs> and i've seen i've seen maximus make snap judgments like he just decides in the moment yeah oh no Oh, yeah. He bit my cousin in the butt. He did. Yeah. My cousin came over. It was all good. And then he got too close to me and like hovered over me. And then he bit him in the butt. <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's probably the best case scenario with Maximus, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, he could do some damage if he wanted yeah, to. Yeah. Maximus is a 130 pound just beast. But yeah. he's my everything. And yeah. so I love dogs. Um, and so does Purina. And so it's a perfect fit. Yeah, and, I love it. And Winnie's going to be in a commercial spot. Really? Yeah. So you'll get to see Winnie. She's such a superstar. She gets her own commercials now. So That's you'll true. see her in, uh, in the show because we have this, um, this everybody in the, the Manu- sh- in the Menuno's household is working. Everybody's got to work. Yeah. yeah everyone's got to contribute. So, um, if you post a photo with your dog uh-huh. and you hashtag it, every dog is a star uh-huh. hashtag, um, Every dog is a star. Yeah, I got that right. Tag at, <laughs> tag at Purina. They are going to be choosing photos to put in um, the show. So you just got to tell us why your dog is a star. That's amazing. My dog misbehaves a lot, but she's a very pretty dog. 
So maybe I'll uh, I'll try to get in on this. Yeah. So what do you have to do? Do you remember? Well, I have to tag every dog. Hashtag every dog is a star. Uh huh. And then explain why she is a star. And tag Purina so they see it. And of course, to tag Purina. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll take Lila Garrity and I'll get her in her most uh, uh, photogenic <laughs> space. <laughs> And I'll try to get involved in this. See, I think you if you put if you put your baby in there and that, I think you like double the odds of like getting in there. Yeah, I think about you that. You do have sometimes. one of them cute kids too. You got to remember about my kid has not. There is not <laughs> one photo of my kid on social media. You haven't done that. That's right. No, but I know. Like I look at the photos that I have, and I'm just throwing away likes. I know. You know what I mean? I'm leaving likes on the table. Are you scared? I'm not scared. I just don't want him to. I, he hasn't chosen to be public, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. And so I don't want... I was even iffy about... Uh, I posted... Uh, I went with Jess, obviously, to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. She's seven and a half months pregnant. But I, one of the rare photos of Jess, I posted a picture of the two of us. Oh, I thought you were afraid of the unborn baby photo. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jess. <laughs> the, the unborn baby hasn't decided no. to be famous yet. Yeah, no. But but she's protected inside yeah, the course. womb, so of she's course. fine. Okay. But I was like, ah, oh, I usually don't do this. I usually don't post stuff mm-hmm. this personal. But it got like the most likes ever, and everybody was super nice about it. So I'm probably just being paranoid for nothing. But yeah, uh, but... I like it. You try. You hang on to as long as you can. Exactly. They're just he's just gonna get cuter and cuter. Right. And so it's gonna get harder and harder. And then one day he'll just start his own Instagram account, and I'll be like, "What are you doing? Mm-hmm. What are you doing?" Yep. Um. Speaking of documenting things, yes. You uh, uh have been going through like so much, uh, and it's amazing how much you're doing. Based on how much you've been through, you know, of course, uh, you know, the world knows that your mom uh, still going through uh, the still going through brain cancer. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's something that you and Kevin and everybody around you has been working on and working with her tirelessly mm-hmm. for how long now? Uh, it's going to be three years in August. That's incredible. Yeah. God, God, I, thankfully. Has yeah. Given us a lot of time. And at the same time. What, a year ago? Maybe a little more? A year and a half. A year and a half ago. Yeah. You find out that you have a brain tumor Mm -hmm. and have to get it removed and go through. So while you're working with your mom going through brain cancer, you have to have brain surgery Mm -hmm. to have a tumor removed. And oh, by the way, you're doing everything else that you do just to try to stay afloat, right? (laughs) Um, And you guys are doing a documentary. Is that right? Yeah, well, I was filming every step of the way. So, just to have it. Just to have it. You know, the second I got diagnosed, um, I flipped the camera on me and Kevin. We were in Mexico in a parking lot. And so I you're just, on vacation? No, we had taken my mom in for treatment. We were taking her to alternative treatments because they said her tumor was growing. I see. And I found out once I had ch- checked them in, it was a really, really bad time, obviously, when you find out that this tumor's growing. Uh, it was really scary. And then, of course, my doctor was like, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have one too. And so I flipped the camera on us and did like a confessional. And then from there, I kept filming everything, different things along the way, doctor appointments and such. And mainly so that I could remember how I was acting, how I felt, um, because it's easy to like kind of... Um, change the story later like i i wanted right. to remember how i handled it right and that was really important to me and and what i was thinking and stuff and because my my life moves so fast i forget totally so i document everything anyway and so when i was recovering from surgery our cto at after buzz and kevin strung all the footage together cuz i had a lot of it and i had a lot of footage of my mom as well and it was a little doc and so I ended up uh, connecting with Joe Berlinger, the goat of documentaries. Absolutely. Who did Tony Robbins' most recent one. Um, uh, was it the, uh, I Am Not Your Guru? I'm Not Your Guru, yep. And I mean, he's done a ton of them. Everything. He's I mean, he incredible. He just did the Ted Bundy stuff. Yeah. And Didn't he do the West Memphis Three? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's brilliant. So I just had dinner with him to ask him some advice, and then I started telling him my story of what I'd been going through. And um, he was like, I, I, I want to work on this. And so um, he was a little busy with Ted Bundy at the time. So now we're, we're connecting and we're going to figure out um, how to take it from where it is. And I don't want it to just be about 
you know, oh, she had a brain tumor. Everybody knows that. We all know we've that what we've been going through. But I want to show people kind of what gets you there. Mm. And I think it's more of like a message to women. That was Kevin who had just this brilliant idea. He goes, Maria, every speech you're going out and talking to women, you're telling them all of these things that they need to hear. Do it in the dock so that everybody can hear it. You know, we're, as women, we're everything to everyone and nothing to ourselves. We are so type A. We have to make sure we get the flowers to somebody on their birthday. We got to make sure we, you know, plan the vacation. We're in charge of like everything. Yeah. And then on top of it, we have to make sure our hair is dyed and our nails are done and we look amazing and somehow we can't age. And there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot that goes into being a woman. Um, And we have to be perfect and we have to balance it all. No one ever asks a guy, how do they balance it all? Mm -mm. They ask women every single day. Plus when people go, how do you balance it all? I go, I have my wife do most of the stuff. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and that's that's, that's the way you do it. Yeah. You guys just, and it's just a different thing. And so... I want to kind of show women and people in general the new life perspectives I've had, the changes that I've made in my life so that I can live a happier, healthier life. I want people to focus on their health more and to realize that um, you can do a lot for a while. Mm -hmm. It eventually will catch up with you. So tonally, not exactly the same as the Ted Bundy tapes. Not exactly, no. Um, although Kevin does want to kill a few people along the way right, yeah. for what they've done to me. <laughs> I can only imagine. So you never know where this could go. That's why docs are amazing, right? Right, right. Exactly. There are a few people he thinks are responsible for a little bit of what's going on. So you think there Maybe that'll be, be in there too. Collateral damage. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not, but... Um, yeah. No, no, there's people we just won't mention who. There's people. Yeah. They know who they are. Yes, they do. And I hope they're apologetic. Want more Jim and Sam? Catch up with full episodes and interviews from celebrity guests anytime on demand using the SiriusXM app.